a conference specifically for beginners of all ages and from all over the world. I'm your host, one of them, Donna Sarkar, and my co-host is the lovely... Seth Juarez. There you go. Seth. I was waiting for the mm -hmm. camera to yeah. go over so I could mm -hmm. be like, Seth Juarez, we're super excited to be here. This is all about y'all learning some stuff, asking mm -hmm. a lot of questions. We're trying to be active in all of the socials, mm -hmm. including the Twitch stream, the YouTube thing, and then also the Twitter team. Uh, the many, Twitter thing. There's too many T's and mm -hmm. I got confused. Twitter thing, you said, hashtag start dev change and we will respond. If you have any fun pictures or things that you're mm -hmm. doing while you're learning your beverage of choice, we will be mm -hmm. happy to show it and feature it among all the other glorious things that you are no doubt doing. Yep. So today, by the way, if you didn't know, is all about low code development. Yesterday was all about high code, JavaScript, Python, C sharp, et cetera, et cetera. And a lot of you say, yeah, this high code thing is cool. What else is there in this industry? And the best thing is this industry really ranges from not writing a single line of code all the way to writing the operating system you didn't write a single line of code on. So today is all about low, no code to low code. And we've got a crazy good lineup of people. We've got speakers from every continent in the world speakers that come from all kinds of different backgrounds. Some are at university, some have just gotten their first job, some have been working in this low-code space for about four years. And most, if not all, are people who started in PAR platform space as a complete and utter newbie to technology. They're all here to share their stories with you and to help you on your journey. Absolutely. <laughs> and the thing, just like a choir, the low notes and the high notes are not more important than one another. Mm -hmm. Low code and high code are equally important. Mm -hmm. I get stuff done all the time with low to no code because sometimes I just got to get stuff done. Mm -hmm. And it's amazing that what you can do with both. So if you are a high code person, you will be surprised at the amount of cool things that you can do with low code. And some of these things, the folks that are teaching it literally just learned it. Am I right, mm -hmm. Donna? Oh, yeah. They learned it. Many, about half our speakers learned this within the last six months within the pandemic period. So these are actually the best people to learn from because they just learned it. They know all the latest resources, the latest techniques, the latest things we've released. Meanwhile, people who've been in the space for a long time, like, wait, we can do that now? That's new, that's revolutionary. And then people who are from traditional tech backgrounds, like me and Seth, will come up with really convoluted ways to solve problems. Hold on, problems. so, so let's, uh -huh. let's talk about, she's like trying uh -huh. to go super fast over this uh -huh. part. So, Someone wanted to change something. Why don't you tell them about a problem that you want? All right. To so let me explain to you why low code matters and why people like me should learn it better. So our friend Brian Dang, who's speaker number three today, he posted a problem on Twitter. He said, I have a block of text and it's all in uppercase. I want to change it to lowercase. And I said, I know, I know. Okay, here's what you do. You put it in a Word document or a text file. Then you open Visual Studio Code. You start a new C program or a C++ program. You read from the file to your C++ program, run the tool or function, then you paste it back into the file. And someone very helpfully on Twitter chimed in and said, or you could use the tool or <laughs> function in Word. No, <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. Yeah, that just yeah. happened. You can go check out on Twitter and see this amazing conversation of why low code is actually the solution sometimes. It's not the solution all the time, but occasionally for things like that, it is the solution. Oh, yeah. My, God. my sense mm. is that do the fast, easy mm -hmm. thing first yeah. and only make it hard if you have to. All right. Exactly. So we are, I think we're about up on mm -hmm. time. It's 8.05. Yes. Ka Cameron, are you, are you good? Cameron's okay. good. So all we're right. going to go now to our first keynote, mm -hmm. introduce them, and then we'll go to Yes. Them. All right. So our first speaker is amazing human being. His name is Keith Watling, and he has an extraordinary story. And he's here to share with you his journey, along with the journeys of many other people in our Power Platform community who are all here to help you learn. Over to you, Keith. Thank you, Seth and Donna. Um, I feel like there's some homework coming from Donna. There always is um, every time she mentions my name. Um, so I'm here today, my name is Keith Watling. Uh, I'm here today to talk to you about career switching. Um, I am not just someone who's gonna reel off a load of old stuff about switching careers. I have actually switched career pretty dramatically myself. Um, and I wanna talk to you about a bunch of my friends, um, how I did it, um, some of the pitfalls and, and all of that kind of great stuff. Now, 
Um, I did this, um, this big career change, the thing that really transformed um, me was um, the Microsoft products, right? So, um, and like no one kind of encompasses the, the change that's possible better than the main man himself, Satya. And um, this little kind of tidbit of information fell down um, a couple of years ago that um, there's going to be 500 million apps built by 2023, like, and that's more that have ever been built. And um, I just remembered like seeing something from Alan Turing and um, him saying that mathematicians, you needed all these mathematicians of ability to build apps and build technology. And, and like, who was a, a mathematician of ability? I, I certainly am not. Um, and I thought, wow, this is, this is really cool. And I was sort of hunkered down doing some stuff. And we'll talk about that in a minute. Um, but what I want to show you is the thing I used just to kind of get you off and get your juices thinking about and looking at this transition. And I, I used this awesome thing that Microsoft have got called the Power Platform, right? Which is broken down into these sort of facets of awesomeness. So you've got Power BI, your interactive um, super duper whizzy chart engine. Think of all the lovely chart bits in Excel, but you can actually click on stuff and do stuff with it. It's, it's amazing. And then Power Apps, which is there for uh, editing your data and interacting with your data in a meaningful fashion. Um, and and, I, and that's, that was my, it's my favorite one. I mean, I'm, I'm, I should love them all, but Power Apps is my hashtag favorite. Um, Power Automate, which was there for when my laptop was shut, doing all sorts of awesome, crazy stuff, like moving um, data around and in the background and sending off reports and all this kind of awesomeness. And this new super fun thing, it's possibly the most fun bit of the Power Platform, Power Virtual Agents, where you can make a chatbot um, and hide Easter eggs in it and do all sorts of crazy things with this chatbot. It's just bonkers. I love it to pieces. Um, the fact that we like I created a chatbot in a couple of hours. I messed around with it. My kids in coronavirus, they were just like making these chatbot. They had so much fun. So just go and do that one. Like don't do any of them. Do that one. It's a lot of fun. Um, these things extend the Microsoft Cloud, right? So there's like these three clouds in Microsoft: the the Dynamics Cloud, the Azure Cloud, and the M365 Cloud. Um, and they also connect to your data. There's 360 plus data connectors. It's probably 370 today. Um, it seems to go up every week um, that allows you to connect to all sorts of awesome, powerful third party um, APIs. That's this thing you connect to to get data um, and all sorts of stuff. So like the world is your oyster with this thing and it's not difficult to do, right? It's so easy that I could do it. Now, why am I saying that? Why am I saying that, right? So I came into the work world doing a little bit of DTP and in um, sort of the dot-com bubble popped and we all got made redundant and I ended up driving a bus, right? And I loved driving a bus. It's the best job in the world. Um, but, you know, I could see myself driving a bus until I was 60, 70 years of age and retiring on it. And I didn't want to be a bus driver all my life. So I got a job controlling buses, right? So I stood by the side of the road with my book in my hand um, and I ticked buses off with a little crayon um, in the book and I wrote down the time that they went past and I tried to regulate the time of the buses. And I did that for a long time. Um, it was the biggest computer game I ever played. Um, it was awesome and I loved it, dearly loved it. But there was a problem, everything was paper. Like everywhere I looked, there was paper. And I was really frustrated. And I knew that from my DTP days and doing a bit of desktop publishing and a kind of just a smidgen of web design, like, like not even writing HTML, like just using a, a, an editor thing, um, that, that I could solve that problem, but I didn't have any tools. What tools could I use? So I just reverted to my business tool of choice. I just went to Excel. And um, I read a book, uh, VBA for Dummies, right? And I just sat there and I, I, I had a thing to do. I had something I wanted to do. And I, I started off by just building a couple of workbooks that were a better version, a better mousetrap. Then I built some more and I built some more and I built some more. Um, and then I started writing this VBA stuff. And like, you know, it took a while for me to get my head around it. I went off, um, I did a course on a thing called Team Treehouse and I went to, and it's brilliant by the way, like go and try that if you want to do pro development, fantastic. Um, but the problem was it was taking too long um, and I had family, I had a job and I had a problem I needed to solve. So in steps the Power Platform, right? 
And I remember my friend just saying, look, if, click on this Microsoft Forms thing. It's really cool. And it, it didn't do just this one thing I wanted to do. So I clicked on Power Apps and, and, and like it, was, it looked really difficult. So I shut it down. And then two weeks later, I came back to it and clicked on it again and, um, and I started, right? And um, I built an app and I built another app. And then I built this little app, right? And, and this little app was a, 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 an app for um, capturing um, mechanical defects on the buses, right? It was a thing I was really passionate about. When a bus broke down, we needed to get that bus fixed as quickly as possible. So I wanted to go out and I wanted to be able to see where these buses were in the world, right? I wanted to be able to go out and um, scan a barcode or QR code to um, find out what part um, was needed or, or check a part out of stock and all that kind of shenanigans. I wanted to know live where I was in the world, where the record was created and take pictures and all that stuff. Now, I can't do any of that in Excel, but when Power Apps came along, oh mama, it was just absolutely unbelievable. Like I couldn't figure out how this was possible. And what really blew me away was all of that code I'd learned on Team Treehouse, all the Python I'd tried to learn, all the C Sharp I tried to learn, I failed miserably at it, I've got to say. It was completely not needed because Power Platform was built on the Excel formulas that I had learned and grown up with playing with the previous, you know, the previous problem that I was trying to solve. And, and that was just like completely bonkers that, you know, I'm sitting there and I'm building an app that works on any web device in a browser using Excel formulas, right? Now, if you're not technologically minded, that might not mean anything to you, right? But think about that. Tell that to your 2000 self. Tell that to your 1990 self. I mean, who remembers web browsers like 20 years ago? I mean, it just didn't work most of the time. And things would kind of be positioned in different places depending on which one you'd use. And, and like 20 years later, I'm building an app that worked on my phone, you know? And no one got excited about any of the workbooks I made in Excel. Like I come home and I tell my mum, mum, I made a great workbook. Yeah, okay, yeah, Keith, that's really great. That's wonderful. But I came home with a nap in my hand and you could press a button on it and take a picture. And that's like, that's bananas. I shouldn't be able to do that. I mean, I, I'm, I'm not a clever man. I didn't do very well at school. I just, I just picked it up and learned it. And, and what I'm saying to you is you can do that too. Like this is in your wheelhouse. You've got this, like totally got this. And if I can do it, you can do it. Definitely. So I became something that's called um, a citizen developer, right? And a citizen developer is someone whose job it is not to build software, right? So citizen developers are everywhere in a business. They are people who want to solve a problem. They are people who, who complain about the status quo. Why is this thing broken? Why does not this process work? Why is it so damn hard? They're the people who are gonna transform the world. They don't need to be technologically adept. They can be trained. There's a course at Microsoft Run called App in a Day. Um, and they really do teach you to build an app in a day. Like, that's what it says on the tin. It's pretty, it's pretty amazing when you think about it. Um, and I also started meeting a bunch of other super cool people. Um, I, 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 I became a, um, a, a champion for Power Apps in my business and, and elsewhere. And I, I started changing jobs. Um, so I got a promotion at my, my, from my bus role and I ended up um, being made into a baseball card with all of these fabulous people who broadly share the same story. And, and I'm going to highlight a couple of these in a minute. Um, but there is no reason why you, and I've left a little space for your story at the top right hand side. Everybody's story is different. There are people on this board who have huge, massive stories like Alan Chai with a hundred, you know, thousands of apps and hundreds of power apps developers that came out of nowhere when he started building apps for a fallen friend at Slombergey. Yet there's individuals on here like Lauren Taylor, who was a principal at a school who makes power apps, you know? She's the busiest person in the world. She shouldn't be making power apps, but she makes power apps. She makes apps for her, for, for her school. Um, it, like it's, it's as small as it is fantastically and phenomenally large. Um, and you can have so, so much fun doing it. I know I did like genuinely had a ton of fun doing this thing, like, you know, start to finish. Um, 
So let's talk about some of the other people and I'll, I'll tell you briefly what happened to me, right? So like, this is Nick. Um, Nick is one of the most energetic human beings you will ever meet in your entire life. I've never seen anything that did not amaze Nick, right? And um, he was in charge, as he would put it, of boxes at the Red Cross. So he used to send out boxes with all the resus kits in them and like to train people on how to do X, Y, Z for the American Red Cross. Like amazing, you know, working for a charity like that. Nick started playing around with power apps. There's a story about Nick on a power apps website. Go and check it out. On the Power Platform website, there's a great transformation story about Nick, right? And... Um, and he worked really hard. He said this was a gateway to learning for him. Um, he realized that like he, it wasn't fully baked. You're not fully baked as an adult. You can become more than the sum of your parts. And he went off and he learned and he developed and he grew. And he had a conversation with someone at, uh, at a Microsoft show. And he said he realized that he could do this thing all the time. And he got a job at a Microsoft partner. Um, he's now working, building apps all the time. Um, and that's just an, you know, what an amazing story. Um, I, I just, you can do that. That can be you. There's no reason. Nick is the most normal guy. I love him to pieces, but he's a normal guy. Sam Saini, another normal, um, human being. And, um, Sam is a bit of a special one because, uh, Sa Samit worked at Heathrow airport. He's, um, he's a, uh, was a security guard for 13 years, a bit like, my years on the buses, you know, and we really gelled when we first met, like, and he lives around the corner. <laughs> so who knew? But um, he wanted to make a difference. So he started making apps. Like, it's all he wanted to do was make a difference to where he worked. And he started making apps. And um, he made a bunch of apps and he helped a load of people make apps and he became a, a, an adoption specialist. Now you're going to say, okay, all right, security guard, app maker, that's not difficult. Well, it is when you consider, consider that both Samit, myself, and some of the other people today are well, quite severely dyslexic. And a few years ago, Samit's on stage shaking Satya's hand, right, at a big trade event. And um, at that time, Samit, you know, six months later, three months later, um, Samit's got, um, Satya mentioned Samit as his, one of his top 10 change influencers of, uh, of 2018. But what no one knew about Samit at the time as he was still studying for his high school qualifications. And Samit proudly stands on stage and says, if I can do this, you can do this. And I'm saying that to you again today, like you can do this. You've got this change within you. Then you've got one of my favorite humans on the entire planet, um, Sarah Critchley, who is one of the most generous people you will ever meet in your entire life, right? Sarah is and was a travel agent, right? But she's, she's a learner. She's a lifelong learner. She experienced Dynamics 365 at the travel agency and she started working with it and she fell in love with technology and off she went on her crusade. You know, it says there that she's a senior solutions architect, which she is, which she is. She's also a business applications MVP as is Summit. And Sarah's got a book. She wrote a book sitting on my bookshelf right over there. And I won't embarrass her by getting it out like I always do, but the book's right there. And, um, and yeah, like travel agent, tech writer, tech author. How does that even begin to happen? But, but it does because she believed in herself. She took herself out of her nucleus of normal and she decided that change was something that could happen to her. Then we've got Rebecca um, Orbis, right? And um, she was a, 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 an accountant um, quite some time ago. Like, you know, um, Rebecca's changed a little bit longer. It's about, it's about 10 years. And uh, she got into technology. She got into SharePoint originally and, and all sorts of awesome, wonderful stuff. And then when Power Platform came along, she just ran off and, uh, and changed her career again, uh, ending up working for a fantastic Microsoft partner to do all kinds of groovy, um, great and awesome stuff. Um, again, because she believed that the change was possible, she made the change happen. You just have to believe in yourself and believe that you can do it because you can do it because these people have done it and nobody is any more special than you sitting right there now. I know that because I did it. And if I can do it, anyone can do it. I'm going to keep saying that. It's going to annoy you, but I'm going to keep saying it. Vanessa Morgan. So Vanessa was, um, was, oh, wow. I mean, 
she's at Standard Bank in in, in Africa, um, Africa's biggest bank. Um, she's a technical business analyst, and um, she was there right at ground zero when Power Platform went went you know and exploded. And uh, Vanessa transitioned into this role. She started using Power Platform to change the bank. Um, they ended up with hundreds of apps and a team of thirty app makers, jobs that didn't exist before. I've got to say as well, and I'm so proud every time I see the photo, it's one of the most diverse, incredible teams you will ever see anywhere on the face of this earth. And um, I get a bit, a bit emotional when I talk about Vanessa because she's just such an awesome person. Um, but do go and watch some of her talks on digital guardrails and governance. It really give you uh, a great grounding in, in what you need to go and do um, this kind of thing at scale in a larger um, organization for sure. Um, so from me, um, I want to give you um, a couple of tips, right? So you need homework. Donna Sarkar will always give you homework and you need homework, right? You need to carve out some time in your life to allow this to happen. But one very important thing I want to tell you to do, and I must ask and beg you to do it, is take your family, friends, and loved ones with you on this journey. Because as you reinvent yourself to you version 2.0, sometimes people get left behind and you really don't want that to happen. You want to take them with you. So go and do this thing, go and put your all into it, but not at the expense of all things. Because there's no point in changing and being this amazing person and being one of these amazing stories if you haven't got the people who you started with with you, surrounding you, helping you, spurring you on. Because they will want to share in your success and feel happy for you. So how I did it was two hours a night, laptop, headphones, quiet, focus, learning, time and time again. The most important thing you can have when you're doing this learning experience is a project to work on. Do not try and learn any of this stuff unless you have figured something out that you want to build, right? Doesn't matter what it is, can be a, um, a gym buddy app, can be an app with sliding galleries um, so you can pick out your, your, your wardrobe, you know? Can be a, a card, flashcards things if you've got children. Could be an app for logging what television programs you've watched when so you know with your plethora of, you know, online content what you've seen and used and watched. Doesn't matter what it is, you need a project to work on because without it, it's just a bunch of meaningless code and meaningless stuff that you've learned. You need to put it into tangible value. Now I transitioned from that bus controller off to being a um, solutions architect. It's my last job. And last year I took up a position at a Microsoft partner. I'm just moving to another one now. And um, I have to say, yes, the, the money's a lot better. The work life's a lot better. It's a much more successful, happy place to be for me and my family. So there is no reason that you cannot do um, all of these things. So if you guys have got any questions, go for it. Um, I am happy to be here and talk and listen and, and all that kind of shenanigans. Um, so if there are any questions, please do feel free to pipe up and ask them. Not going to yet. So there you go. I better do some more talking. <laughs> um, the, the awesome thing um, about Power Platform, it's got quite a low um, learning curve. It's not as steep as other languages. It's not as steep as, say, going to learn Python or C Sharp, although Python is quite a, it's got quite an elegant learning curve um, if you wanted to learn one of those programming languages. Power Platform um, is there inside of Microsoft 365. So you can just go and grab hold of it if your organization's got it turned on and start experimenting. One of the first things I did was take part one of the template apps um, to build one of the, to, to solve one of my business problems. So if you're in a business now and you've got a business problem, I would certainly say, go figure out whatever it is and use one of those templates to try and solve that issue. Because, you know, there is a lot of goodness in there. There's also a whole bunch of community um, activities and events. So there's a fantastic community on Twitter called the Power Addicts who will wrap you and surround you with love and attention. There's also the community forum, the Power App Platform community forums. I have to say, 
they're a little bit different. They're a little bit um, kind of uh, 1960s peace and love where you won't just get a um, an answer to your question. Um, you won't just get part of the answer to your question. You'll quite often get someone saying, hey, listen, if I can't solve this thing, just just ping me and we'll jump on a call and we'll sort, we'll sort your problem out. We'll work through it together, which is an absolutely awesome and incredible thing. Um, the, the love that's surrounding this platform is, is awesome. So go out there, mark yourself as a power addict on Twitter, um, connect with some of the power addicts, follow people like Shane Young and, and, um, uh, uh, Daniel Laskowitz and, um, uh, uh, just so many people, Brian Dang, um, um, Samit Saini, get on, um, Twitter and go and find those people and follow them. Or Daniel Christian as well, like Sandy Usha. Um, just so many people. And, and go and follow those people. Read what they're doing. Look at their um, look at what they're putting together, how they're putting it together, and learn from them. Shane's got a YouTube channel with a bazillion um, uh, Power Platform, Power Apps uh, videos on it. There's a guy called Matt Collins-Jones who's got an equally awesome um a uh, number of uh, of flow videos um there's the guys in the cube all that kind of stuff just so so much just so so much so go and find um, go and find something that makes sense to you um please do um come and tell us about it as well we want to hear your story we want to see your change in the top right hand corner we want to have you in this slide deck today and and have you as one of these career transformation people there's no reason that you can't do it um you know i i really struggled at some point um trying to get through it, it it's a fight um it, it doesn't always go easy there's a whole bunch of stuff that's like you think is just absolutely insurmountable and you'll never be able to do it but that's just not true you can you just have to keep going coding is about failing a lot you know when you write code you don't expect it to succeed you, you'll kind of always be there it will fail there'll be some trace error there'll be something on there that like you can't figure out all you have to do is just keep at it keep going follow the community ask questions you'll figure it out you will figure it out power platform i mean you just have to prepare for success most of the time yes there are errors and all that kind of stuff but it's a little bit easier it's a little bit lower learning curve when you finished to get that job when you kind of like when you kind of walk in, you want to have a portfolio of works. So that's why I'm saying to you, it's okay going off and getting a load of certifications and, and, and doing a load of exams, but nothing sells you faster than showing pictures and, and examples of what you've done, right? So make yourself a little brand, make it all look the same. Have a look at Clarissa Gillingham. She's brilliant at having her own little personal brand of apps and go and have a look at that figure out what your app layout wants to look like and then build those apps for yourself and take yourself on that journey because you can do it. We don't need to be mathematicians of ability. This is the future. Satya is saying there's 500 million apps that need building. I mean, that's a completely crazy number. I mean, it just doesn't even begin to compute, but there is an opportunity in the marketplace right now for you to switch your career from where you are to this technology and or one of the other technology stacks. And if Samit, myself, Mick, and everyone else can do it, you can too, for sure. And by the way, all of us are crying in the studio. So while we recover, we're gonna to jump to Lauren Taylor, our keynote speaker this morning. Welcome, Lauren. Thank you so much for taking time to join us. Well, hello, Start Dev Change folks. I'm Lauren Taylor. I'm the principal at Manitou Park Elementary in Tacoma, Washington, and I have the privilege and honor of being here today and also the privilege and honor of following Keith Watling, who is um, definitely an inspiration to me and other people who are just um, just getting started on their journey. Uh, so welcome. Um, I know that many of you are just getting started on your journey and um, that's an exciting time because I mean, honestly, that's the best time because that means anything uh, is open to you. Um, and that's just kind of what I want to continue to inspire is that 
really through the Power Platform, anything is open to you. I'm, I'm an elementary principal, and you'll hear a little bit about my journey. I won't give it all away in the in the cover slide, I guess you could say. So we'll talk about, you know, any good educator knows that you have to set the stage, right? You have to give the learning target. So here's what we'll talk about today. Just kind of who I am, um, my apps for education that we have currently, my journey, and then we'll talk a little bit about your journey as well. Um, I listened in with Keith. Um, what kind of stinks about a virtual event is that you don't get to hear the whole the whole session before you because you've got to turn everything off on your on your cameras and microphones, but I got to listen to Keith a little bit talk about Donna and homework, and I have homework as well, so you'll get tons of homework today. All right, so let's talk a little bit about who I am, okay? So I'm a mom and a wife. Uh, I take those roles incredibly seriously. Um, I I uh, have two beautiful daughters and my husband is an amazing supporter. My husband's actually right this very moment getting the kids ready for virtual school so that I could be here with you today. And technically it's my day to do that. So he's, he's an awesome supporter. And I'm a recess supervisor, you know, in a typical school year. I uh, am a nap time room, a social emotional coach, a math helper, a late night evaluator, a mascot tamer, a substitute, uh, but more importantly, I'm loved by little people. That kind of really just sums up the role of an assistant principal. It's all of the, or sorry, a principal. I was an assistant principal last year. Um, it's all of these uh, things tied into one, which is basically means that I am loved by little people, and that's the best feeling in the world. But one thing I'm not, I am not a technical in the term developer or coder. I haven't had any background or experience or education in doing um, in doing any of the things that I've been able to do through the Power Platform. Um, so I'll show you a few of the apps that we have here at Manitou Park Elementary that I've uh, developed or developed with the community along the way that have helped us to do our work better. Um, so we have uh, just kind of our what we call our command center, um, where we have our reading app is kind of embedded in our command center. And I'll, uh, I'll, my journey actually starts with this reading app, so I'll get a little bit more into it in a little bit here. But really, um, this is a place where teachers can come and all of the student information is in here and they can make guided reading groups. Uh, they can do some one on one reading and type in data. Um, about the student, they could take a look at their classroom data, either, you know, whole class or a small group, they can add students in. Um, and then we have our check in check out app and what our check in check out app really is, is an app that helps us to look at students who might show behaviors um, that are just telling us that they need another person in their life, really. Uh, they need another person to kind of come alongside them and be that mentor. And so what we do there with that app is um, every day, you know, student student uh, data is taken every day. And typically that was always done on a, on a sheet of paper. And um, for every student that was in the that was in the program, which could be, you know, 20 to 40 students in this program. And then that sheet of paper was delivered to our family liaison um, every day. And then what she would do is go into this giant Excel document and um, she would enter the data in either daily or monthly um, so that so that we could get a picture of whether or not the program was working. And obviously that was quite time consuming. So I was able to develop an app to really cut that down. And, you know, uh, staff can use their phone to check in and check out with students, enter data, and then view that data right then and there. You could view the data with the student as the administrator. I could view the data right at the end of the day rather than waiting for um, for our monthly meeting to make those decisions. Because if you know anything about behavior or student behavior or just people in general, things change on a whim. And looking at data monthly is not necessarily uh, as conducive to helping to change those behaviors. You need to be able to see that quickly and efficiently. And that's what this, this app helps us to do. And then these apps use, um, I, we use the Power Apps, Power BI, Power Automate, I still call it flow. So if I do that, look, don't ding me. It just, 
it happens. And then uh, SharePoint as well. So SharePoint is where we kind of house the data for these things. And then um, Power Automate helps us to get that data quickly. And Power BI, obviously, to display it in Power Apps where everything, everything lives. Um, another app that um, I always say this is my favorite app because it's very near and dear to me. I actually had nothing to do with this app other than request that it be built. Um, and so the issue here with this app was we needed a way to track students and we needed a way to make sure that they're getting on the right bus so that they're getting home safely. What I love actually in the community right now is there, there's a mom who's built the other end of this app who I have never met, but I can't wait to meet her. Um, because uh, what we, the issue we were having was that sometimes students would get on the wrong bus. And so what we decided to do was implement a system where we, uh, we were checking kids into the bus, but that meant printing a different list every day, clipboards out in the rain, you can imagine it. So I asked the community, I know this is an app, I do not have time. And the community responded heavily and uh, built this app for us. And so what we're able to do uh, once we are back in school is go on our phones, check students into the bus, make sure that they're in the, on the right bus on the right day, going to the right place. Um, another app that we have is our um, our behavior support request app. And so oftentimes teachers are in class teaching. And I mean, you know, we've all been in school where there's been that student who's been acting out or displaying a behavior that is just not conducive to learning. And what that does is that stops the learning. So then teachers have to stop teaching, go over, you know, call on the phone for someone to come. And then the office walkies me and I'm not available. So they walkie someone else. Um, and I decided, you know, we've really got to mitigate that. And so through this app, uh, teachers are able to request support from the office or they could request level three support, meaning, hey, we need help right now. Um, or And once they've requested that support, everyone who's available for support gets a notification on their phone or smartwatch or whatever it is so that they can respond to that uh, support. And then also it lets the teacher know on the back end, like, hey, someone's coming, you know, to support you. And then in the meantime, they've got strategies that they could try uh, to work on with that student that they could try. So it just really helps to, I feel like, support the teacher in that time where you're still trying to teach and still trying to get things done, but you also need some support outside of the classroom. And actually, this app is something that I'm working on right now um, to change into the virtual world because now we're teaching and we do still have those, but obviously my office referrals are way down because everyone's teaching online. That doesn't mean that teachers don't need support. It just means that the, it, it looks different now. And so I'm actually changing this app so that teachers can still request support and request me or someone else to step into their Teams meeting to have a conversation with a student. And then we also have, uh, this is not technically an app. This is just a, um, a Power Automate. It's a flow. And um, and this was because we had to build um, in when, te when teachers first came back into the building, we had to know everyone's schedule, where they were going to be, when they were going to be because of our new COVID guidelines. And really what they were supposed to do was email a email their administrator that information every single time their schedule changed. And I already have enough emails in my inbox and I didn't want any more. And so uh, using this, this uh, flow in Power Automate really helped us to cut that down because people were able to, um, I was able, my assistant principal, my office coordinator was able to get those schedules, approve them right then and there and send feedback to the person submitting the schedule. You know, maybe there's someone else going to be in that area or we're at max capacity. And so they're able to, to put those notes back in there and say, hey, you know, you can't come this time, but maybe you can come this time. So it just really cuts it down and gives people the, the freedom to come and go when they need to, but also helps us to keep everyone safe. So those are just some of the things that we've developed. And um, without, you know, having the technical know-how to do those things. And so all of these apps, again, we use Power Apps, Power BI to display our data. Uh, and we use uh, Power Automate to make things move quickly and efficiently. And then SharePoint really houses a lot of our data. And SharePoint is just something that works for me because I'm not, you know, developing for an entire district. Uh, they do that at the district level. I'm just really looking at my kids in school. And so SharePoint uh, works nicely for me. 
So let's talk a little bit about the journey. And I call my journey just an accidental love story. I accidentally fell in love with all of these things and it was really out of necessity. Um, and so the problem here was if you look at this picture, we give uh, an assessment, it's called the DRA, and it's a one-on-one -on -one reading assessment that we give to students. And um, it provides a lot of really rich information about what what teaching steps that you need to take in order to help that student grow to the next level. But it literally is, it's a one-on-one -on -one assessment, every student. So this stack here is about, I would say it's about two or two, maybe three classes worth of reading data. Um, and each student has a folder. And that folder goes from one teacher to the next teacher. So the person who has the folder is the person who has the information about what that student needs in reading. And so that might be one classroom teacher. But you have to think, we have um, myself, who sometimes I read and work with students. We have special education teachers. We have our English language teachers. We have intervention teachers who go and support students. And we also have other people, you know, our paraeducators who come and support students who all need to know that information. And to get it, they would have to stop what the teacher's doing. Hey, do you have so-and-so's folder? And then they'd have to stop, read it, look through it, and then be able to pull that student. And to me, based on my school demographic, the growth that we needed to make, that that's too much. You're not going to be able to provide the student exactly what they need every single time you sit and read with them if you have to go through that entire process just to get to the child. And so I thought, there's got to be a better way to do this. I don't know what it is, but there's got to be some kind of better way. I keep looking the wrong way. And so I went on um, the Office 365, just the home ribbon, and this is an older, older view of it, but this is what I was looking at at the time, so I decided to put that in. And I just was clicking on things that I had never clicked on you know, before. Um, just apps that I had never used. Flow was one of those apps that I had never used. And when you go into the template gallery, you're like, oh, wait, hold on. This automates things. And I am doing a lot of the same things over and over and over again. I mean, if every teacher could have a personal assistant, that would be amazing. Because a lot of the time that teachers spend doing the same thing over and over and over and over again is really something that Flow could help with. Um, and so I tried it out. I said, oh, okay, let me try this out. And then I get kind of that, that message of death, I feel like it's called, where it says two of your flows have failed. And I'm like, what am I doing wrong here? You know, um, I'm trying to, to put save my classroom walkthrough data based on a template that I saw. And, it, and I think I have everything structured correctly, but then it says that it, it failed. So really what this became was a lot of emails back and forth, back and forth of people trying to help me to fix it. It escalated to our, you know, the highest level of our technology help desk department to the point where it actually ended up on, um, on the desk at, at Microsoft, at the product group, because as a district, there was sort of an issue with, with flow for us. And so uh, the person who helped me at, my, at the Microsoft product, product group, I believe he's still there. I always call him out um, and he says to me, if you like flow, you'll love Power Apps. And at that time I was thinking, you know, did you fix it or did you not? Because I'm not really, I'm not an app developer. I don't know if you listened, I'm an educator. That is not something that I do. And he's like, yeah, okay, it's fixed. You can use it, no problem. At the same time, I'm telling you, if, if I'm listening to what you're trying to do, that really does sound like a power app and you should try it. And I'm like, great, thanks, you fixed it. I am totally just moving on from here. And so, here we are in, in Flow, and I'm looking at these other templates in the template gallery. And I would suggest if you've never used Power Automate, just go to the template gallery because it sparks um, it sparks your interest. It starts those wheels kind of turning where you can realize, oh, this is what, what Power Automate can do. And so I thought, oh, I'll save classroom walkthrough data. That was a template that was in there. And I thought, well, I walk through classes. I need data from it, and I will save that, so I'll use that. And then it was visualize my classroom walkthrough data in Power BI. And both of these things had in there SharePoint. And I'd never used SharePoint before either. And so to use these, then I had to kind of dig in and figure out SharePoint. And then once I was in SharePoint, 
I see this little button, this little create an app button. And, they, and there's power apps right above it. And I thought, oh my gosh, okay, this is what he was talking about. He was saying, you know, it's this easy to make a power app. And for an educator to have that feeling of empowerment, like, hey, I can do what I need to do without asking any other outside experts. I can create an app just by pushing a button. Um, that That's amazing and empowering all at the same time. And so we were then, from that point, I was able to develop our reading app. And here's a really very early version of it, but I really wanted to show this version of it rather than where it is now, because this was where my journey started. And this today might be where your journey starts. It might be something that looks similar to this, that where I didn't feel like it was the most beautiful and pretty app, but did it do what it needed to do? Heck yeah, it did. You know, um, so I use Teams and the stack, uh, so Power Apps, uh, Power Automate, and Power BI to make our data accessible. So we went from taking all those stacks of folders that you saw and having all that information now condensed into the app. And I stuck it in Teams because here's the thing, you know, and I, and I have some, I think some of my teachers are watching this right now, but. Here's the thing, if you're going to ask educators or anyone who's busy or who wears multiple hats to learn something new, that is the slowest possible way to adoption that you could ever, that's the slowest possible route to adoption that you could ever take. So we were already using Teams, so I put the app in Teams. And I never said, oh, it's a standalone app. It's something that I want you to take out your phone and download Power Apps and use this app. I didn't do that because that would have made it something else for my teachers, and that's not what I wanted. I wanted to make their lives easier. And so I just said, oh, you can put it in Teams. I'm going to stick it right in Teams. They don't even know it's an app. Right now, they're thinking it's part of Teams, and that's exactly what I wanted. Now, they do know now that it's an app you can use on your phone, tablet, whatever, but at the time, that was not the best route to take for me to get uh, a greater adoption, was to say it was something new. And then also, I use Teams um, and Power BI to make our data visible. So I can put not just my app in, as a tab in Teams, but also my data as a tab in Teams. So everything's in one place educators and busy people in general, if you can keep everything just in one place without going, oh, click over here, and then over here, and then here's how you click over here, people don't always have time for that, um, or, or the patience for that type of thing, and I really want to cut those out, and teams really help to just put everything in one place, because we were already there. And then we also use the stack to make our data timely and to make our data relevant. And so our Power BI dashboards are in here. And here's where we are. Our, this team is looking at our check-in and check-out data as a, as a whole team and deciding what we need to do next for students. And so Power Automate is going to be that thing that helps you to do things quickly and efficiently. So Power Automate would be that personal assistant if you need the personal assistant. So your journey starts here. So it is homework time. And when I heard of start, dev, change, I immediately thought of this. If you can think, if you can think it, then you can do it, right? Just start. If you think, oh, you know, I, I, I need a better system for, um, for our data, or we need a better system for checking something in or checking something out, just start. Just design what would be the best case scenario. Dev. Now, you may not be a developer, and that's okay. So what? I am not uh, a technical, in the sense, developer. Um, but, you know, Keith was on before, and this right here, uh, what he told me, really changed my life and my perspective. He says, you're better than a developer. You're a content expert. So I know what my building and my teachers and my industry needs and Power Automate and Power Apps and Power BI have given me the, the ability to provide that. So then your next step is to use your skills and your knowledge to quite literally change the world because you are the content. You are the expert in your content area. So my homework for you is I would definitely say start in that um, Power Automate template gallery, if I have educators out there who are watching this, that's where I would tell you to start is the template gallery and find something that works for you. Because then once you, once you get that feeling, that rush of success, like, hey, 
I did this, it's addicting and you're gonna go on to the next thing and then the next thing, okay? So uh, lastly, I would just say thank you. Here is a picture of me and it's near and dear to my heart because I don't have kids in the building anymore, um, or at least right now. And I can't get this close to them as like I could before. So please, if you're interested in what we're doing in education, go ahead and follow me um, on Twitter and make sure you get your homework done today. I'm so excited for all of you starting your journey. Thank you so much.